Good morning. This is our weekend message of encouragement. And today we're going to focus on the cross of Christ and his resurrection. And uh, we, ha- we want to open with this scripture in just a moment. But let's pray. And Lord, we come to you. Lord, we, we, we want to focus daily on your cross and the power of your resurrection. We thank you, Lord, that you went to that cross for us and you rose from the dead for us that we can have eternal life also and that we can be saved and spend eternity with you, Lord, and we can have grace and help in time of need right now. We thank you, Lord. We ask you to bless this word to our heart, to our mind, to our understanding, to our walk especially. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll blow the shofar and call the people of God to study the word. We want to open with this portion of scripture, and this is Hebrews chapter 4, and beginning with verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore, verse 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in and to help in time of need. We need mercy and grace to help in time of need. Let's focus on the cross of Christ this morning and the, the, the truth that he died on that cross was buried on the, in the tomb and rose again. We know that the cross and the resurrection of Christ were one-time events, but this one-time event of the, of the cross, the one-time event of his burial, one-time event of his resurrection was once for all mankind and once for all eternity, never has to be done again. <clears throat> These two events had to happen for us and for him, for us to have eternal life and for him to be seated in his present place of authority. Had he refused the cross, he wouldn't be seated in that pleasant, present place of authority for us and for all mankind. Ephesians 1.21 says, For above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. This is Christ's current position. Above all rule, authority, power, dominion, and every name that is named, in this age and in the age to come. Uh, What does this position on the throne at the right hand of the Father mean for us? So in Ephesians 2 and 6, it says, and raised up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ. We have a royal position. We have a heavenly position. We're living here on the earth, but we have a heavenly position with Christ because of his work on the cross and his resurrection. This is wonderful and powerful. The Father has made us who believe in Christ to be seated with Christ in heavenly realms because we are united with him. This gives us uh, a positional authority in Christ to be able to come to the throne of God and ask for whatever we have need of, to make petition, to make appeal. And I encourage you, to pray, pray, pray. There there is no other way to receive except to pray. We we pray. We we have a prayer chain in the church. Uh, People call in requests from all over the country, actually other parts of the world too, that know about it. And and we have prayer going on and we have victory after victory. One just was just uh, sent in this morning, a lady that they thought had uh, pancreatic cancer. Uh, there is no cancer, and we pray for our dear sister Winnie that uh, everything will be corrected in Jesus' name. Um, we, we go on, we, we are living, we are living eternally and forgiven already. Already we have eternal life. We think, well, when I get to heaven, I'll have eternal life. No, the day you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, eternal life was granted to you. Already we have eternal life and we're living in the heavenly realms with Christ because of his cross. And has, he has a cross for us to bear. Not only so, 
He bore that cross for all mankind, but he has a cross for us to bear as we live for him. In Mark chapter 8, verse 34, it says, When he had called his people to himself with his disciples, so all the people, not just the twelve, not just his close disciples, but all the people he called to himself, and he said to them, he said to all of them, which that, that realm includes us also, he says to all of them, Whoever decides, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And so, number one thing is deny yourself. Remember when he, he called uh, Peter and John, he called the disciples at the seashore there in Galilee, and they, they were fishermen, that was their profession. They dropped their nets and followed after Jesus. They denied themselves entirely they had no idea uh, how were they going to live uh, how were they going to eat and all of that but but they were they were convinced of the of the truth of what jesus was giving them they dropped everything and followed him we need to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow him taking up our cross is the way of the lord walking in the way of the lord and for some, it's a lighter cross. For some, it's a heavier cross. There are Christians being martyred all over the world right now. Uh, their cross is much more severe than many Christians that we know of in this country. It says, let him, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself. That's, that's one of the biggest struggles for Christians, self-denial. Deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Don't you want to follow Jesus? Wherever he leads me, the old song says, I will follow. Though none go with me, I will follow. When we keep the message and the image of his cross before us, we've got to, we've got to focus on, on the Lord Jesus Christ and the work that he accomplished on the cross, then we can bear our cross. When we think about what he went through for us, for all of us, and for us individually, then the, the cross that we're bearing, whatever we're have to be having to go through in this life, became, becomes so easy and light compared to his cross. So, and then when sin and temptation come, when we keep the cross of Christ in focus and realize he lived just like we, did, we live, he was tempted, just, we read that just a moment ago, temp, tempted in all ways like we're tempted, yet he did not sin, then our way becomes easy and anything that would try to tempt us, uh, uh, rob us of victory, uh, the ability to live a victorious life, all of those things can be put under the blood of Jesus when we focus on the cross of Christ and the power of his resurrection. Not only his cross, but the power of his resurrection. We serve a living Savior. If he rose from the dead, and that power of the resurrection uh, lives also in us, and we can have victory over any temptation, any weakness, any failure. If we fall, we can call upon the power of the cross through, con through confession of sin and repentance to put all sin and all failure to death. We can put sin and failure to death by confession and repentance of sin. We're coming to the foot of the cross. We're calling upon the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us our sin, wash us clean, and pick us up so that we can continue following after him. This will set us back on the right path with Christ. Every time we confess sin and we repent of sin, we're set on back on the right path with Christ. Paul said the cross kept his mission focused and helped him not to fall prey to fleshly methods or cleverly tactics, tactics or wrong means to deliver the gospel of Christ. It kept him focused and it kept him, um, it, it kept his motives right and it kept his methods right. Many are failing in this today in ministry. Their motives are not right. They want, they want gain. They want wealth. They want to become like rock stars and kings and queens. Uh, and their motive is not right. They, if, if that's what their focus is, if it's all about money and recognition, then that's not the gospel of Christ, and that's not the right um, motive or the right heart in which to present the gospel. Many are using great methods, uh, all kinds of uh, 
theatrics and, and, uh, and show business methods to present the gospel of Christ. And that's not the right. Now, we want to have our motive right and our method, method right as we deliver the gospel of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 1 and 7, For Christ did not send me to baptize, Paul says, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. Not with wisdom of words, not with our, uh, not trying to flatter our listeners with wisdom, but presenting the truth of the gospel of Christ and the cross of Christ should be, if, if we do that, it says the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. Then all the glory, all the recognition is received by man, not by the Lord Jesus Christ. The cross also severs our slavery with the world. Many Many were so enslaved to the world before they became Christians. And when we keep our focus on, on the Lord Jesus Christ, his cross, and his resurrection, then the world, the power of the world is severed. We don't have to have those things of the world. Oh, it's wonderful when the Lord blesses us with something nice, uh, whether it's monetary a gift or, or something uh, material. It's, it's a nice thing and we give him thanks, but we don't have to have those things. When, we're, when our focus is on the Lord, his cross, and his resurrection. It helps us to keep in line with our higher calling. We have a higher calling that's much higher than the things of this world, anything the, the world can offer. offer. Our calling is in, in, is in Christ. Galatians 6.14 says, But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. That's, that's the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, his cross and his resurrection. Then the world becomes crucified to us and we are crucified to the world. Those things, we should not boast in anything except the cross of Christ. We don't have anything to boast. All the old things that we used to be, the, the, the titles we had, I don't even talk about that on these videos, where I came from, uh, the titles and all that. It's not important. The only thing we can boast in is the cross of Christ. Yet the cross revealed the depth, the depth of the Lord's suffering and the depth of his love for us. That cross reveals the depth of his suffering for us and his love for us. He would not have gone to the cross without love for us. He loved the world. God, the Father and the Son together had this plan to redeem mankind. God, the Father, so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son that whoever believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. When we understand the importance of the cross and put it next to the trials of our faith, the things we're going through, it becomes a beautiful thing reminding us of the price he paid. <clears throat> when we're focused on the price that he paid, then whatever, whatever we're going through seems like nothing. It makes it easier to carry our cross and to die to self when we see and we stand at the foot of his cross. Like the song says, we will cling to that old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. It will be worth it all. Anything you're going through right now, it'll be worth it all if you stay faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ and continue to deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow him. This puts everything into focus in this life, and this is so important in the day in which we live. A lot of people are struggling, going to diff through different things, and a lot of people are upset about what's going on in the world. There's so much torment, tor turmoil and torment in the world, but when we cling to the old rugged, rugged cross, when we keep our focus on the Lord, his cross and his resurrection, these things are like nothing and we can, we can make it another day, another day with Jesus. Uh, we have victory. You know that, there's another old song, one day at a time. And that's all we need to do is one day at a time with Jesus. We have victory now because of the cross and the tomb. The cross and the tomb, get this, the cross and the tomb are both empty. That's why we have victory. Jesus is not hanging on the cross. Jesus is not laying in the tomb. We serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. We serve him now. They are vacant because we serve and worship the risen King and Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. This, this is cause for both celebration 
and why we must share. We need to celebrate his cross and his, his, his empty tomb, but we also need to share that message. We need to, at, at the tam, same time we as believers are celebrating his, his cross and his empty tomb, we need to realize the urgency to share that message with all who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. In this life, we all experience pain, tragedy, and other challenges, but we need not be stopped. The enemy will try everything he can to discourage us. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He'll try to discourage us and stop us if he can. Weigh us down with burdens and stop us in our walk with Christ. But we have no need to be stopped in Jesus' name. In, in uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 19, says, A little while, the, the, this, this life with him is forever. He says, a little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you shall see me because I live and you will live also. We serve this risen, re resurrected Savior, the, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has compassion on us <clears throat> because he came down and he lived in this world and he experienced everything we're experiencing. Back to, we'll close again with that scripture, Hebrews 4, 4 and 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest, the Lord Jesus, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. The confession is our, is our faith. We confess our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hold fast that confession of faith. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness. He knows everything you're going through. He's experienced it. But, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. He was tempted by everything, yet he, be, he walked a sinless life so that he could go to that cross and be this, the Lamb of God without spot or blemish and make the perfect sacrifice for you and I that our sins can be washed away. The punishment of our sin has been taken. As we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we can have eternal life with him forever and ever. Verse 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace because, because the cross is empty, the tomb is empty. Because of his, his death on the cross and his resurrection, we can come boldly before the throne of grace. There was, a, there was a curtain of separation between the worshiper and the holy of holies. But on that day of his resurrection, the veil in the temple was torn from top to bottom, giving access to those who believe on him to come boldly before the throne of grace and to receive that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Mercy. Mercy is something we receive from God that, that is without any merit, without, we, we don't deserve it, but we cry out to him, we appeal for mercy. Uh, we, when you pray for our country, when you pray for America, pray for mercy. America deserves judgment. There's so many evil things happening in America. America deserves judgment, but we cry out to the Lord for mercy for America, and we find grace to help in time of need. We pray for not only mercy for America, but grace uh, in our time of need in this country right now. And we, we cry out to the Lord personally for that, mercy and grace to help in time of need. I don't know what you're going through right now. We're going to pray. But uh, you, whatever you're going through, you can come boldly in the name of Jesus before the throne of grace and ask for mercy and grace to help you right now in your time of need. Let's pray. Our Lord Jesus, I, I pray. Uh, I, I know that there's somebody listening right now, and this just sounds too good to be true. They're, they're thinking that right now. It sounds too good to be true, but it is true. It is true. Jesus died on the cross for your sins, was buried in the tomb, and rose on the third day to give you eternal life. Just as he lives, we also live forever. He lives forever. We live forever with him as we believe on him. Won't you pray right now? Confess your sins. Ask the Lord to forgive your sins. Come into your life and be Lord of your life in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for the church. 
those in the body of Christ that are looking around in the world and getting discouraged. Everything seems to be falling apart. Actually, everything is falling right into God's plan and scheme for these last days. If you read Matthew 24, you'll see Jesus said all these things must come to pass before he returns. So Lord, we thank you. These are flags that are hailing your return. You're coming soon. We thank you, Lord. I pray encouragement to the church as we look to your cross and your empty tomb, the work of the cross and the power of your resurrection. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.